Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and it's finally here. I think the laptop of my dreams. Now, to be fair, this isn't necessarily the laptop of my dreams because I actually picked up the base model of the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro because I feel like a lot of the reviews were kind of focused on the more premium M1 Pro configurations or the maxed out M1 Max configurations. And I really wanted to see if this base model with the weaker CPU and the weaker GPU at $2,000 was worth it because these are expensive machines. Everyone's looking to save money. And if you know this M1 Pro with the eight core CPU and the 14 core GPU can actually perform pretty well for $2,000, well, I think that's gonna end up being a really good value for people, especially with a lot of the hardware features you're getting with this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and unbox this. And then I'm gonna run a ton of benchmarks on this and you're gonna be able to kind of gauge uh, what the performance is like on the base model. Take it away, Greg. All right, and here it is, the 14 inch MacBook Pro we got it here in Space Gray. Already just looking at the design on the box. I'm so excited to open this. Look at this, it looks so bezel-less. Uh, that, uh, th look at the design. It looks good. Let's open this up. Come on. What are we doing here? People don't want to hear me rant about a box. They want to see the product. Okay. Let's open the lid up. Let's get our first look. Ooh, there it is. The 14 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, I guess I can already feel a little bit of the heft added to this product. Let's look at the other stuff first. Let's just get out of the way. So... Look at this, you can already see the MagSafe charger. So look at that, MagSafe charger in the flesh. It's braided, which is nice. It's got a USB-C on the other end because uh, it's no longer connected to that because you have a USB-C power brick right over here. So we're looking at a 67 watt power brick here. So this is the entry level MacBook Pro. It does ship with a weaker charger because it only has an eight core processor. So it doesn't need as much power to drive. And then of course you got your MagSafe. And then I've heard, I've heard that there is a fabled Apple sticker in here. So let's open this up. MacBook Pro, where's the stickers? Look at this. Black Apple stickers. Apple is cementing this as a pro product. Look at that. They actually look pretty good, these black Apple stickers. I was kind of making a joke, but those look really nice. I might have to use those somewhere. I usually just, take these stickers and put them in a drawer somewhere and never use them ever again, but these seem worthy to be used. All right, let's get to the reason you're here. Let's open this up. I already messed up the uh, nice wrapping Apple had, but ooh, gosh. One-handing this is actually a little bit difficult. Look at that. So 14 inch MacBook Pro. So look at that, you can already see the new design squared off. This does look uh, much thicker in person, I must admit. You can also see on the back, the MacBook Pro is just etched into there. And then you can kind of see the feet design has changed too. It's kind of like, uh, it's. It, I think the other ones are kind of just like stick on. These have like a wrap around over here. And then of course you can see all those beautiful ports. So we got HDMI, USB-C, Thunderbolt, uh, an SD card. And then if we flip it over, we got our MagSafe charger. Uh, another USB-C port, another USB-C port, and a headphone jack. All the USB-C ports on this are Thunderbolt ports as well, so very high uh, data transfer speed. And yeah, look at this. You can see vents on the bottom over here, um, vents on each side, big vent on the back over here too. So it looks like this thermal design is actually going to be uh, pretty good. Like, just looking at this now, these fans look beefier than what were on the Intel MacBook Pros. Plus these are running more energy efficient chips. So I think thermally, just holding this, I don't know if we're gonna run into any problems, especially on the base model. On the base model, I think no matter what, you're gonna be fine. So we open this up and we can see uh, our first look at the keyboard. It's all black now, even like the uh, indentation over here is black, no longer silver. Um, you can see it's a function key row, no touch bar anymore, that's gone. Uh, whether you like that or not. Um, and Touch ID in the top right corner, of course. Big old escape key. It's the magic keyboard from the last one, just without the touch bar. And, and it looks a little bit different because it's now in black. Of course, you have the haptic trackpad as well. So here you can see the notch as well. Just looking at it real quick in person before we set this up. It looks nice. This, this MacBook Pro looks really nice. So let me go set this up. Let me go run some benchmarks. And we're gonna come back and talk about all of it. All right, 
I'm back, set up the MacBook Pro, ran a ton of benchmarks on it, and uh, I wanna tell you all about the performance. But before we do that, just a real quick first impressions thing. Um, I think this is some of the nicest hardware that Apple has ever made. Just playing around with it for the few hours that I've had it. Uh, the display, the mini LED display with 120 hertz is amazing. I don't even think it has the blooming issues that uh, some people complain about on the iPad Pro. Like this display looks like OLED to me. It's really good. Um, the speakers on this, even on the 14 inch model, wow, they sound amazing. I can't believe the sound is coming out of that small enclosure. The screen real estate on the 14 inch is pretty good too. The notch doesn't bother me at all and it uses the menu bar uh, pretty well. So to the point where it really doesn't bother you uh, when you full screen applications. And the design too, with all the ports back, the squared off design looks so nice in person. Uh, even the engraving on the bottom of the MacBook Pro, it just feels so premium that I really think that when you're talking about Apple hardware, uh, especially combined with these new chips, this is the nicest hardware that Apple has ever shipped. So I, I just can't wait to just use this more, but let me go into the benchmarks with you because this is kind of exciting. Okay, the first thing I was really interested in testing obviously was this CPU. So this is the M1 Pro with the eight core CPU, meaning it has six high performance cores, whereas on the other configurations of the M1 Pro, if you spend more money, they come with eight high performance CPU cores. So you're kind of losing out on two cores here. So the first test I really wanted to run was the simplest one out there. Geekbench and hey, I was kind of shocked by this. So with Geekbench, we got a 1761 on the single core score, which again, that's pretty much what you get with the M1. You're not really gonna see any improvements in single core here. Uh, all the improvements on the M1 Pro machines are gonna come with multi-core performance and we are seeing that. So we're seeing a 9,890 multi-core score, almost 10,000 on the multi-core score. That obviously is higher than the M1 machines and also, if you look at the comparison charts here, you're getting CPU power, even in the base model, that is higher than some of Apple's previous desktop computers. So right at the top here, you can see the 2019 iMac, which I actually personally owned, and I spent a ton of money on that uh, eight core CPU from Intel, and this base model M1 Pro is smoking it in Geekbench. So that is really awesome to see. So CPU performance on this might not be as good as the uh, 10 core CPU, but I don't think people are gonna be disappointed if they pick this up. This is really good performance on Geekbench, but Geekbench is kind of like a light benchmark. Let's load up something a little bit more intensive. So uh, for CPU scoring, let's go over to Cinebench. So we loaded up Cinebench. This takes a lot longer to complete. This is actually a really good benchmark to run multiple times to kind of see if there are any thermal issues. And as I ran the Cinebench benchmark, and quite frankly, all of these benchmarks, um, I didn't really hear the fans turn on that much. Now. That's kind of interesting because we know these pros are using a lot more uh, power in the chips, uh, especially on the higher end configurations. And that's something I kind of want to test as I pick up uh, higher end configurations, which I will be doing a review on. This is just the first one I'm doing a video on, but um, it's going to be interesting to see if you get the base model, if it actually runs cooler compared to some of the more power hungry chips on, let's say like a 14 inch MacBook Pro with the Max chip. But anyway, we ran this benchmark and by the end of it on the multi-core score for Cinebench, we got 9,476 points. And you can see on the comparison chart, just kind of like in Geekbench, uh, this thing is smoking some of those uh, other desktop CPUs. So for reference, my M1 MacBook Pro from last year scored 7,644 on the same test. So we are seeing a significant jump up in performance even on this eight core CPU model. I also wanted to test Apple's claims of a super fast SSD. Apple is claiming like really ridiculous read and write speeds on the SSDs in these MacBook Pros. I loaded up the disk speed test from Blackmagic and uh, I didn't find that it was reaching Apple's claims. I think they said it was like seven gigabytes per second uh, on the SSD speeds, but still these are probably the fastest SSDs I've ever tested and maybe you know, maybe it can reach that in peak performance, but with this uh, sustained performance, this is probably what you'll get. So we're getting 4,210 on the write speed and around 5,440 on the read speed. That is super fast for an SSD, like, oh my gosh. Now, one of the big focuses with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max 
is actually not even CPU performance, it's GPU performance. And that's an area I really wanted to test here. Now again, this is the weakest M1 Pro chip. It comes with a weaker GPU. It has a 14 core GPU rather than what you would get on the uh, maxed out M1 Pro chip, which is a 16 core GPU. And then if you actually went to the M1 Max, you can get that in a configuration of either 24 GPU cores or a maximum of 32 core GPU cores cores. That's a lot of cores. So I went back to Geekbench. I wanted to test out uh, the GPU benchmark here. So we did a metal uh, benchmark first, and that ended up getting a 37,545. Next, I also wanted to test the OpenCL scores on this MacBook Pro, running it on Geekbench again, and we got a 31,712. I also wanted to run a benchmark I used to run on uh, older Macs, so I can have a reference point here. So I ran the Heaven benchmark, which again is a GPU benchmark. Uh, we let that run. I was looking at the frame rates and stuff. They looked really high, but we only ran this at medium settings so I could compare it to the older MacBook Pros, uh, which also ran the same test. And we're running it at the native resolution. So uh, with the 14 core GPU, we're seeing an FPS of around an average of 103 uh, with a minimum FPS of 16.1, a max FPS of 197.9, and uh, the score ultimately got a 2,597. Again, going back to the M1 MacBook Pro where I ran the same test last year, uh, the overall score was a lot lower. So it was an 81.5 uh, on the minimum FPS. We got 15.1 max FPS, 132.6 and the overall score of 2053. But either way, we're seeing good CPU performance increases and GPU performance increases over the M1, which is what Apple promised. And overall, it's looking pretty good. Now I kind of wanted to uh, take all of these benchmarks to kind of do one final benchmark and that is what I do and I know not everyone's a video editor but I want to do a final cut export test and I want to do it in H.264 and also in ProRes because these MacBook Pros apparently have custom encoders for ProRes and they're supposed to export super fast so I want to test uh, that out as well and I ran uh, first the H.264 export on 4k it was about a 10 minute clip very simple no effects or anything at it like that just wanted to kind of get uh, an idea of how fast this export it. And you can see it's going along pretty smoothly and we could probably clock that in at four minutes and 43 seconds. Now I don't have the exact figures of the 13 inch MacBook Pro exporting to H.264. Uh, I might cover that in a future video, but last year when I did this uh, same test, I actually did a ProRes export. So we actually do have a comparison here because this one's gonna blow your mind. So this custom encoder, which apparently comes on every single MacBook Pro, regardless of GPU configuration, uh, it just flew through this 10 minute 4K export in ProRes and it clocked in at a minute and 20 seconds to finish that export test. That's fast. Uh, for reference, for my 13 inch MacBook Pro where we ran this same test last year, so the M1 MacBook Pro with that kind of a 10 minute 4K clip, very simple, uh, exporting it to ProRes, that took three minutes and 11 seconds. So we're seeing quite a bit of a performance increase in this new MacBook Pro. And I think that all has to do with that uh, custom ProRes engine that Apple has built into these MacBook Pros. Either way, I'm really happy with the performance of this base model MacBook Pro. I know a lot of people were kind of concerned because these were weaker CPUs compared to the other offerings from the higher end M1 Pro and M1 Max configurations. Uh, but I think the performance here is still really solid. I think this is going to ultimately be a pretty good value because the M1 uh, machines were already doing really well in CPU tasks. Uh, the GPU got a lot better on the M1 Pros. And then I think the biggest limitation for a lot of people with these M1 machines was the 16 gigabytes of memory. And with these new... Uh, M1 Pro, even on the base model, you can go up to 32 gigabytes of memory. So that might've been your only limitation on M1 machines. So for you, maybe it doesn't make sense to step up to the more expensive configurations of the M1 Pro and M1 Max chip. And I gotta say, running all these benchmarks on the 14 inch model, uh, I don't think I heard the fan spin up once yet. So thermal design, at least for this base chip, seems to be excellent. And I'm just so happy with this 14 inch MacBook Pro. I can't wait to do more testing. I got more configurations on the way. I got a 16 inch M1 Pro coming. Uh, I got a maxed out 14 inch model. We're really gonna test and see if this 14 inch thermal design is good. So if you wanna see those videos, 
Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. They're gonna be coming up soon. Gonna be working really hard to get those out as quick as possible. And hopefully you found this video helpful on benchmarking the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro. I am really impressed with these machines so far. And uh, you know, I wanna do a full review, so I'd probably wait for that too. But just based on everything I know with the M1, I think these are all starting to look like solid choices. Uh, hey, future Greg here. Actually not future Greg, uh, that's a different person. Greg from the future here, uh, recording on the MacBook Pro webcam, actually. This is a good test of the 1080p webcam and uh, using the internal microphone to record this part. Just wanna let you know that uh, just finished exporting the video that I worked on. Obviously you're watching this video right now. And I wanna let you know that uh, using Final Cut on this MacBook Pro, the base model, it's the smoothest experience I've ever had with Final Cut. The 120 hertz display, the processor, the GPU, um, it was amazing how fast I was able to edit this video. So it just, it was just so smooth. So really wanna say my impressions of the base model are like, uh, this is an amazing computer. Uh, this is the strongest Mac that I have personally ever used. Obviously there's stronger Macs that exist now, but for me, this is the strongest Mac that I've ever used in terms of CPU and GPU performance and just the way I edited uh, this video. So um, if you're worried about picking up a base model because of the power differences, at this point, I feel like I can confidently say, don't be worried. Um, maybe you, you might need the higher end configurations depending on who you are, but I think most people, uh, base model is gonna be perfect. So yeah, very happy with this machine. Here's a webcam test at the end, just to throw it in there. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Again, if you liked it, make sure you like it, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.